Well, hello there, everyone. It is Christy, and we are into the second part of the discussions we're having in terms of responses to our reasonable questions video. Last night, we had Steve Shives, um, we had Motivator Opinion, and Michael Rollins on, well, along with some guests. And tonight, we have Christiosity of Christiosity Channel, or Christiosity Channel here, and Kevin Logan, where we joined, we think, in about 45 minutes by Tom, who also made a contribution. But I don't really need to say too much. If you guys are watching this video, it's probably because you're following the interactions or the drama, however you want to phrase it. So why don't I hand it over to the person whose questions we're going to be focusing on tonight, Miss Yossidy. Hello. Um, yep, so uh, I'm gonna be doing two of my questions today and then another one at another time. Um, the first question that I had it was, it's not sort of a question that you would argue against necessarily. Um, so it was, would you come on and be willing to put aside differences and work with, you know, people for men's issues, men's suicide, male addiction rates, um, male abuse. And I got a very overwhelmingly positive response. I think a lot of people, uh, shoe on head said that she would do it. Um, Infidel Emma, I just many, many people came on. Uh, Max Durat, uh, I can't even remember off the top of my head how many people. Um, also, people have been getting a hold of me at Twitter, and some people on our side of the fence were also interested in sort of an aisle reaching um, group. So, what I've done right now, and I will put it uh, live and put the link in, in the description of your video, or I'll ask you to do that, Christy, rather, is um, I've set up a group I called Against the Odds, um, YouTubers who want to work together to help men. Uh, and the first order of business, I think, from my point of view, is um, to sort of narrow down our focus. So I've put up a poll on whether we would rather work on suicide and depression, um, whether we would wor work on abuse, on um, and now I'm blanking, addiction, uh, addiction, is that the one I forgot? Yeah, addiction. Uh, and I did want to talk a little bit about some of the concerns that people had popped in. Um, first of all, I'm going to make it public. I want as many people to join up and join in as uh, on either side of the aisle or right in the middle. Um, as long as you're a person who feels like you can work with other people you can put aside differences in order to uh, further a common goal, a positive goal, then great, you're welcome. Um, the minute somebody comes in and starts grandstanding, starts you know, trying to derail, um, I'm going to give them one warning and they're gonna be gone because I, I did this sort of thing for a living. You know, I don't have, it's not like on YouTube. Um, when you have a goal, you have a goal and you accomplish it. Like that's what I was paid to do. I was paid to play games with people, you know, endlessly on Facebook. So, but provided that you're the sort of person that's like, no, I really want, I want to do good things in this world. I want to use my platform for positive changes, then great, you know, you're more than welcome. And I think it'll be a really great opportunity for people to sort of meet each other in a neutral space, as well as to really get something real world impact accomplished. So that's the goal. Um, now I talked a little about some of the concerns people, some people didn't understand what I meant when I said that some of the, um, some of the things that you would do to work towards this goal aren't necessarily gendered and they felt that that meant I was saying that these didn't these problems didn't have gendered components, and that is not the case. Um, I just some of the things that you can do for them. Obviously, we're not going to just solve male addiction. Like it would be really nice if we thought we could do that, but that seems like an unlikely thing to do, right? Uh, but what we could do is we can pick a focus and work on an aspect that is not, you know, likely to get feminists and anti-feminists 
at each other's throats. Um, so things that I see from my background where I see addiction, um, for instance, the needs that are there, at least in the United States, I see things like the need for uh, substance abuse programs and treatment centers um, that are more widely available. Uh, I see that people, there's a need for education on what addiction is and what the treatments that are available. I see that there are um, our current laws and the way that they are structured, the way that they are implemented, fuck those laws, fuck our drug laws. I mean, I can't even say it strongly enough. They're, uh, our, our criminal legal drug war is just a travesty, you know, in my opinion. Uh, people with addictions need information, they need help with children. You know, when a lot of the people that I knew who came into a treatment center is like, yeah, I mean, of course, I would love to spend a lot of time going through treatment, but I have children that I'm caring for. I can't just leave them alone. So, you know, there's just a number of different places where you can look and say, well, what could we do? What would be useful? Um, as YouTubers, maybe our biggest option for being useful is to um, involve ourselves in a, a charity that's already there, or perhaps there is just getting out education, getting out really evidence-based information to the public about addiction, which is sorely needed. So I just think there's a lot of different avenues that you can go to that you don't even have to touch sort of the more tricky minefield areas so yeah i think i think actually this group is a really interesting and potentially quite important thing because it's a point um to, to pick up on something you said um there that i've been uh, making for a while that there are issues like i think male suicide because no i mean no one benefits from male suicide mm. so there's that surely is an issue where we can come together and if we can create a space like this facebook group where if we set aside our nonsense, like I will not be going in there with my anti-MRA rhetoric. I'm just going to leave it at the door. Whatever comes of that group comes of it. Um, and but not to say that you then have to, you know, completely forget about it outside of that group. But right. in that group, set aside that kind of hostile thing and come together and work on something which I think is for the benefit of everybody. Right. Um, male suicide is that is the probably the thorniest issue um but definitely there are some places there that we could sort of leverage something to i think just um giving people information say on warning signs for suicide on um what we know and we know it's a little bit different for men and women what this even what the um what the warning flags are they might be a little differently um, so, uh, defining depression and defining symptoms of depression and talking about how you can go and, and seek help, um, all of those things are out there. All of those things need to be, they need to be focused on more. They need to be done more. Um, certainly several times I worked with, um, men who were suicidal and it is, they're they're all about the stiff upper lip and right until the whole thing falls apart like women you sort of see this progression this is just from my experience now i'm not um but women you can see you can see them becoming sadder you can see them sort of talking about certain things but men it's like nope everything's great everything's fine fine great and then one day they're coming in and they're saying no i'm going to shoot myself no i am like i have it ready it's like if you don't help me now today you know i mean i we've been on the phone uh, the place where i worked we were on the phone with the police saying you have got to get to this guy's house because that's it you know um and those are the better interventions those are the ones that actually you catch them in time very frequently you don't because there is no reaching out for help 
There is no uh, putting yourself out there and just saying, I need help. I need help now. You know, this isn't okay where I'm at. So, so, you know, it's a tricky one, but obviously any suicide it devastates families. It devastates. I had a friend who um, his father committed suicide when he was a teenager. It's so it's incredibly devastating to communities. It is an enormous health, uh, public health disaster out there. So that's kind of my spiel. <laughs> I don't want to. So if I could jump in on that. Well, first, mm -hmm. um, about the group itself, how is it a Facebook group? Or do you want to plug it a little bit more and like, um, like, yeah, how people can join and what, where the where it's located? Because I think I missed that, or maybe you didn't specify. It is a Facebook group, and I'm I put that out there because it seemed like the easiest way to get a large group of people on social media sort of collected together. Um, but if that's an issue, I'm obviously willing to to look at that, and we could do some sort of something different. I think it's a good. But thing. right now. Sorry, yeah, don't want to interrupt you. So, yes, it's a Facebook um, group called Against the Odds, YouTubers working together for men. And it is, um, I will give you the link, Christy, so that you can put it in the description and I'll put it also on my channel. I'll have this whole sort of segment ready to go and put it down. And yeah, anybody um, can sort of come in, they can mess. Um, I'm on Facebook under Chrissyosity channel. You can message me through Twitter, you know, any way that you need to get a hold of me. Um, you can message me on my YouTube channel or on the comments section of the videos. And I, I keep an eye on all those sorts of things. So I will keep a lookout for you one way or another. If you want to be involved, I'll get you aboard, you know, in any, or if you want to be involved in a group in sort of a good faith way, I will get you there. Yeah, and I would just say that I would join that group because probably despite the image that is presented or people have of me, I am, uh, you know, my 20% ally is that my, sorry for the background noise, 80% um, enemy. <laughs> I think that, you know, there are times where we can come together and the fact that groups can come together on issues makes it more powerful, um, not less powerful. So that would be something that I'd be interested in. And I think there's a lot of opportunities for intervention in um, state legislative debates. Mm -hmm. And also, um, you know, trying to spread around information that comes out in news sources. And I would hope that, you know, one of the things that comes out, sorry, my street is a very narrow street with a lot of life in it. So <laughs> the children there's about. a lot of noisy German children around. <laughs> <laughs> I have a very good time at 10 o'clock at night on a having a brilliant time but um uh yeah the you know the things that you're talking about I, I, you know when people ask about the issues of toxic masculinity and healthy masculinity i think that this is a, a time where we can put those principles into action by evaluating like you said the stiff upper lip the way that men are socialized to be to repress their emotions and appear stoic Right. Um, and realizing that that's just, I hate to say it, it's a social construct. It's something that's been with us, you know, in honor cultures and and, and, and shame cultures or whatever else that the kind of things are, this, this notion of um, men uh, being stoic and, and being strong and self-sacrificing. And that was really important when people lived in Sparta and people had, you know, the, the Goths to deal with and or the Goths dealing with the Romans. But we're living in the 21st century now. So we need a masculinity that represents our moral growth as well as our um, our humanism, the growth in our humanism. Mm. So, uh, you know, that's a good place to have those discussions about um, people often get uncomfortable when men cry. And if men don't feel yeah. that they can um, cry without making other people uncomfortable, obviously that's a social barrier that we as women don't face. That's a sort of female privilege, if you want to say. We are much more yeah. free to express our emotions. And so how do we break down barriers so that men, we create spaces where men feel comfortable, we create people who have the attitude that a man who is crying is a man who's expressing his emotions in a very healthy way that he needs to, and we need to be there and support him um, and do what we can for him, just like we would with a friend who was a woman. I would say that's very much a, a similar point to male abuse, where uh, men just um, do not uh, 
come forward when they're being abused in many cases, you know, because they just don't feel like they can admit to it. Um, sometimes I think, uh, sometimes my understanding is they don't even feel like they, uh, they can name it for what it is, you know, like, no, no, it's because of the whole idea. And I hear it. I hear these things when I'm in my real life. I don't know about you. The people that will say things like men can't be raped or men can't be abused. That's silly. Those are always men to me. I don't, I don't hear it a lot from women sort of saying that. Uh, that's just my personal experience excuse me, my personal experience, I don't know what you guys have found, but it's just this sort of, you get your whole hackles up and sort of feeling like, no, 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 men, men couldn't, that could not happen to a man because men are bigger and they're stronger and they're not like that. And so. Yeah. It's, well, it's, it's part of um, right culture that I think the reticence of those on the other side to um, accept right culture do a disservice to men. Um, because part of rape apologetics is involved in things like um, uh, when a, a young, a, you know, a twelve-year-old boy um, is essentially raped by, say, a thirty-five-year-old female teacher. Now that's rape, but to say, oh, he should have enjoyed it, or this is every boy's right. dream, or whatever, is absolutely fucking deplorable. Mm. Um, and like I said, the reticence of of people on the other side to accept that that's even a thing does a disservice to men as well as obviously doing a huge disservice to women in general and surely that's another area upon which sure, can we not reach some sort of fucking common ground here it seems so obvious i hope so i mean and even if it means that we don't necessarily tackle some of the underlying things you know sort of let them be <laughs> um because i know there are some people that as soon as they hear the phrase toxic masculinity, it's going to be, forget this, you know, they're out of there. You know, and I've, I've said to these people, I said, you know, toxic masculinity was not originally, is my understanding, a, um, a feminist idea. It was, met, it was a male psychologist or psychiatrist, I'm not 100% sure, um, who was working in a prison with men. And he was looking at these men who were having all these sort of, they were very violent, obviously, and, and sort of their attitudes about what a real man was like was causing them a, a great deal of problems, you know, especially you could see how that would be true in a prison situation. So he was sort of the one who sort of got this whole idea that if you feel like being a man means you're, you're always tough, you're always in control, you're always ready to do, you know, to throw down with somebody. And whenever you're challenged, you can't take a challenge to your masculinity um, and just let that go. You can see how that sort of thing could cause a lot of problems in a person who maybe isn't perfectly stable to begin with. Yeah. Well, so having mentioned uh, prison, um, and the concept of people not accepting uh, right culture as a, as a thing. I think it's mm. this is the point at which I have a tiny little poke at Christy for a slight hiccup she made. Um, the reason I wasn't involved in this the video itself um, was because I'd put together a video of things on my channel as unlisted that Christy, I think, initially downloaded and lost. And then I made a mistake by deleting it, so I wasn't in the video. But one of my questions was going to be, about meeting people halfway on the basis of rape culture by accepting that at the very least the rape culture which exists in prison is something that i think everyone can agree on surely it's mm -hmm. a widespread wide known thing so why why is it that we can't at least meet on that and say that's right culture? why is giving into that point somehow losing or you know it's again i think that in of itself is a sort of certain type of toxic masculinity that just accepting that you were wrong on one point means that your entire thing falls down or something and it's very strange i don't know why they do that can i well first yes there was a miscommunication <clears throat> that um yeah you would uh, um had the video and, and put it up and then i went on uh, traveling around and then when i went looking for it it was already gone because i hadn't downloaded it immediately um because i was super busy and i didn't tell you that so yes um and maybe i can do a de an addendum where i just pull out the question you just posed and uh, stick it on there as kevin's addendum question um to the video. <laughs> we can on the topic of, of rape culture i watched 
um, Garrett and uh, Tim talked to Armored Skeptic and Shoe on Head. And I haven't finished it, but I did get through about the first hour of it. And one of the things that came up was the issue of rape culture. Mm -hmm. And they were of the opinion that you can't really compare. Well, they talked about gun culture, which I think is, it's, an, it's a culture comparison. But the difference between a gun culture and rape culture is that guns exist, that they're physical objects that we fetishize in a sort of, you know, if you want to put it that way. Um, but when it comes to rape, it's almost the opposite. It's the ignoring of the issue that creates culture. And it's the ignoring of the rape kids. It's the ignoring of women who come in to report. It's the victim mm -hmm. blaming by not talking about issues of intoxication and consent. Um, and saying that women changed their mind when really they weren't in a position to give consent when they were intoxicated. So the, the different, you know, and, and of course, it's always easier to do these things in hindsight, but I wanted to bring that up because the cultural pressures around rape um, exist in the same way in prison and that people don't want to look at it or, you know, actually even more than that, it's the kind of, it's the only kind of rape that you can laugh at and mock. And when yeah. we were talking about this coming up as a you know, kind of growing up until I got more exposed to feminism and the idea of, of gendered norms and how we get trapped in them, the only kind of male rape I would have been aware of would have been prison rape. The only plot time that men could get raped would be in prison. And that would be the way that I would associate it when I was 17. So, um, yeah, I mean, we, we need, do need to talk about how these um, things like rape culture exists in prison and we've most culturally seen with men but any kind of sexual abuse in prisons is it's a reflection on us as citizens that we're mm. unable to take care of our fellow citizens and protect them when we're you know the punishment is they're going to prison they don't also go to prison to get sexually assaulted that's like something we would associate with a, a dictatorship or some kind of tyranny right and so we need to take, own that those crimes as our not paying enough attention and take care of it because who knows maybe someday we'll be behind bars <laughs> for some weird <laughs> reason you know an accident, whatever you know um but we don't want that treatment for ourselves so why would we tolerate it for anyone else mm -hmm. but, you know so that's kind of what i wanted to bring in but also the importance of understanding the role of rape culture in perpetuating male victims not coming forward um and also people not knowing how to handle it when a male victim comes forward okay so yeah, as far as um, as my little group um, is concerned, I just want to say that you don't have to necessarily endorse the concept of rape culture or toxic masculinity or any of these other sort of higher level um, concepts in order to join in and say, you know, because it's going to be sort of, um, it's going to be democratic uh, with the exception of me, I'm the absolute dictator of people who I don't, who poison my little well are getting the heck out. Um, but with the exception of that, it's going to be based, it's going to be whatever we make it as a group. Um, yeah, I, I was actually just about to interject with that uh, same thought that although we're discussing these, like you say, slightly higher, more um, uh, diffuse uh, aspects of, of gender politics, whatever. Um, I don't think that group necessarily has to go down that line at all. I think we stick to um, much more neutral, um, mm -hmm. broad aims and goals. Right. Well, I think that it, the way that it connects, if I can, you know, take this down to to the practical level, is when it comes to a legislation that talks about dealing with um, a men who are, who face homelessness then understanding the barriers that men face or with suicide reporting or addiction issues and being aware of those gendered problems makes the policy solutions better tailored and more effective. So, you know, we don't have to have those kind of, you know, obviously the group isn't going to be discussing, you know, notions of, you know, so it might come up practically, but the point of it would be to in increase information, I would assume, and also to try to support legislation that moves uh, funding in the right direction, support services in the right direction, and also public attitudes in the right direction. Um, one of my, if I had like a pie in the sky um, sort of idea, I would love to see uh, force to penetrate uh, to be added to uh, rape um, as well as right now, most rape laws that I know of um, don't really include that. Yeah, in, in Britain, there's been a, something of a push, which I've been you know, very tangentially involved in, uh, or very in a very small way involved in, um, to try and change the British law to include um, 
forced to envelop, uh, mm. uh, forced development, uh, forced to penetrate. Um, mm. uh, but sadly, unfortunately, the, uh, we got to the is it 10,000 or whatever it requires for an official government response. And the government basically said, we're not changing anything. So we've started again. Because, I mean, mm. that's ultimately, there's nothing else you can do, I don't think. Right. Yeah, and I would support that too, because rape is rape is rape. Right. Yeah, exactly. I think if there's one thing that it, I would hope everyone would be able to accept, outside of possibly psychopaths, I suppose, is that um, it doesn't matter who's doing the raping, they're wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about, you know, being forced to do or having something, ha either forced to do something that you don't want to be doing or having something happen that you don't want. It's all about, I mean, that's where the actual sexual assault comes in. You know, that's the point of it. So it's it's really about the consent or the lack of consent. But I'm not getting on that tangent because somebody will. <laughs> yeah, that's totally. a did you want to um, go to the next one or um, I was also going to ask how many, you know, videos do you want to tell people like the number of videos you watched and how you did your research in preparation for this too, because there was some feedback on like, how people were doing it in the last video. So I wanted to just have, let you have a chance to tell people um, kind of what you did to prepare for this. I watched a great many. <laughs> I watched. Oh, my goodness. I couldn't even tell you um, off the top of my head how many I watched. Um, some of which were very were quite good uh i liked infidel emma's i think i probably already uh, talked about her i live um positive improvements uh there is a youtuber i think her name is jeans or it, it's with a g it's either jeans or gleans like i that can't be right anyway <laughs> um g-i-n-e-s i think Hers was excellent. Um, there was, let's see, uh, Vengeful Scarecrow, Max Durat. Uh, I watched Chris Ray Guns, Armored Skeptics, Shoe on Heads, TJ Kirks. Um, I watched the Kraut and Cheese streams. I watched just enormous numbers of these things to the point where it became like, I, like it wasn't even processing anymore so I had to sort of stop because it was like no I've, I've heard the same answers to the same questions too many times and I'm just like blah so could you do you remember off the top of your head like what were the some, some of the common responses that kept appearing and the, your reactions to them um on my questions or on questions in general well um and your questions obviously but if there were some other ones that stuck out to you you know we've got a little time while we wait for Tom so I'd be interested in hearing it um, I think being that the one janitors came up a lot uh, was first it, you know, that's one that, uh, and, and this is, I'm not trying to be negative. I'm trying to stay in very positive and there were quite a few, there was some real reason to be positive in some of these answers. Uh, but one thing that really surprised me is how many people do not see themselves as being, if you remember the first question was the one janitor saying, you know, when you sort of react very hyperbolically or very, you know, with this sort of exaggerated hysteria to people that you're complaining about being hyperbolic and exaggerated and hysterical, that seems a little ironic to me. And a lot of people were saying, oh, we don't do that. Like we're either joking or if you think we're doing that, we're probably just joking or we just don't do that. I don't see that. And that um, struck me as very strange because from our point of view, we see that very frequently. Um, I, I don't know if that's something anybody wants to jump in on and, but just. Yeah, to build on that a little bit, uh, that's something that Tim said as well, that he watched uh, Armour Skeptic's response and that when Tim's question came up about being called a cock or a mangina or being there question, you're questioning male sexuality, he just had no idea what Tim was talking about. And Tim realized mm. that that's not his lived experience. He doesn't know what it's like to have comments that just rain down on you, calling you a cock or a mangina or questioning, you know, oh, that you're a virgin. 
Um, mm. like, all the time, every day, as Tim, or whenever he puts up a video. Um, you know, it's more, some videos more than others. Um, so yeah, people's lived experiences, if they don't kind of understand where we're coming from, um, you know, they haven't, I don't think that side has really walked too much in our comment sections from our perspective. But mm. um, also, yeah, the, um, the idea that you can be, this is something again that was brought up in the hangout with Garrett and the motivator opinion and uh, armor skeptic. She went ahead and said that, uh, you know, she has a persona and that's not you know, what she says about feminism uh, doesn't represent what she's always like in her private life. And that's very different for me because um, I'm maybe a bit more exaggerated because I'm on a smaller screen, but I'm me in mm -hmm. my hangouts and on my channel. I don't say things that I wouldn't be willing to say to your face or that I wasn't sincere about. But what I don't know that they always realize is that people take them seriously. And people go, oh, yes, their arguments, take their arguments over to our comment section and rain them down on us. And we're like, this is dumb. Yeah. And then you go to, go to them and they go, well, I don't really think that, you know, I just do that for entertainment. And like, well, you, you've got fallout of your, your actions here. Well, that, it's almost worse in a way, because I don't, I, I have more respect for at least someone being honest and saying X, Y, and Z than playing a character and yet feeding into the same nonsense, because that's just irresponsible. Uh, I don't even know money grabbing. Possibly, I don't know. It's that mm. that that doesn't sit well. Yeah, I, I mean, it was because, uh, and perhaps, um, how do I put this? Because if you act like, oh my God, SJWs are coming for us all. We're going to be. They're going to get us. Take our freezing beaches and run run away you know um <laughs> some people are coming to us and basically saying you know you nazi how can you possibly come and take my freedom from me like what is the matter with you and i'm going what the hell are you talking about you know i mean this sort of exaggerated and hyperbolic response as um the one janitor said and i want to take his his question away from him um but it's something that we see, I see it constantly. I mean, just this idea that um, that we're monsters, you know? It's like you really have to sort of dial this down a little bit. Yeah, maybe there have been some, some situations that sort of uh, got out of hand as far as, you know, young people, when they go and they do protests or, you know, they speak out, they're, you know, sometimes they're just 19 or 20 years old and they're a little more exaggerated than they would be if they had really sort of sought and thought about this. But that's, that's a common practice since forever, you know, since recorded history. You know, if you go back and look at what people thought about the young people in the 60s or the 70s and how they were acting, it's always the same thing, you know, it's, oh my god, these crazy people are going to tear our society, you know, up by the roots and throw it away. And of course, they don't because they get older and they get a little more measured and they start to understand things with a little more um, nuance, shall we say. And then things, you know, it just sort of works itself out. It's um, So the idea that, oh my god, this is really such a terrible thing because... Um, they protested Milo Yiannopoulos or they yelled at him. It's like, no, no, that's sort of, if that's the worst thing that's go. if you're dealing with a movement as huge as feminism is, I mean, we're talking about millions of people. And if you have to go back four years to when somebody pulled a fire alarm in Canada, you're not dealing with a hate group. Like, I'm sorry to tell you that. I'm sorry to burst that bubble for you that that is not the way hate groups work yeah right <laughs> on a, on a, a to, to take it back a second to the use of jargon whether it be cook or, or sjw or whatever one of the questions from the original white guys have questions for sjws to which our video was sort of a mimic of in response um the chris reagan question of overuse of the phrase uh, racist and sexist I thought was probably the height of lack of self-awareness 
because they've misused phrases like cook mangina sjw any number of other we all know the stupid fucking phrases they used and i just think how how utterly unaware of yourself do you have to be to acute to project in that way mm. um and i uh... I think that there is a real difference in how we do use some of these terms sometimes, right? Because it seems like they, when they speak about racism and sexism, and I think this was something that was talked about in the Hangout yesterday, Christy, um, they mean something very sort of overt individual racism. You know, they're not necessarily talking about implicit biases. They're not talking about things sort of on a gradient. Like I could, I would say I'm racist. If somebody said, are you racist? I would say, yeah. Be and what I mean by that is, you know, I was raised in a racist society and I have implicit biases. Most people do. Um, you can go right now, you could go to Harvard implicit bias test and get a test on your biases. And it is something designed by a neurologist and it will tell you, yeah, you're a little racist. You're a little sexist. You're a little homophobic. You know, you were raised in that society when, from when you were a little tiny child with no defenses against whatever it was you were picking up. So yeah, it's in there. And it's just a question of being aware of it, really. And when you're aware of it, then you can work on it. I mean, that's the whole point is it's the when you someone points out to you that something you said was racist or sexist mm. okay um, and because this is a very timely issue the day that we're recording it is when the trump tape from the, <laughs> from the yeah. American um, presidential election and i saw that and i was particularly outraged and a friend of mine was being very flippant about it and that made me angry and we had an interaction i was civil i wasn't warm but ideally, mm. you know, in that situation, what I should be pointing out is, you know, I know you're making a joke of this, but this is actually something I've experienced. Women, every woman I've talked to about this has experienced this. This is a real problem for us. So you mm. making a joke out of this is not going to help me not experience this again or any other woman experience it again. Help us. Yeah. Don't laugh it off. Mm. I don't know where I was going with this, but it was a very important point. Well, I... You, like how you talk about things in the labels and yeah getting it back to it is yeah i have biases just like um you know, you know cc as i like to call her because because yes <laughs> yeah um, i hope you're okay with that i do that all the time i am no okay. i'm cool with that so, cc um well i found it back to, and tim i'm sorry uh kevin's point about um the terms yeah kevin go ahead i'm sorry oh no i was just gonna make a stupid joke about if she if just for this hangout she'd spelled her name with a k we could have been the kkk's I'm just, <laughs> opportunity miss. <laughs> it, well, blame my mother. She, um, she named me Christina with a C. So crazy well, woman that, was, that she. That was that was poor forward planning, clearly. It really was. She should have known. And, and there's also one other thing, and I'm gonna, I, if I remember, I want to bring it up when we do when I do my questions when, next week with um, Phil Martiarty and and you, Chrissy, and whoever <laughs> else um, is going to be joining for that last one, but. When I listen to a lot of, like, if you know, I can sort of stomach to listen to, to Carl for any length of time, or when I was listening again to the Garrett Hangout with Shoe on Head and Armored Skeptic, and I want to say this, people probably haven't, maybe some people have listened this far, I really hope they have, because this is really important, and I want to say this to the people who are suspicious of SJWs, um, or even people who are just egalitarians, or people who are feminists too. One thing I've noticed is that there is a conflation between feminism and feminists. So they will, people will say things like in this hangout that I referenced several times, you know, feminism has uh, a PR problem mm. or, you know, a feminist, feminism thinks. And it's really important that we distinguish between ideas and people. Um, feminism is set out of ideas. It can't think things, it can't believe things, it can't teach yeah. things. Right? People have opinions and beliefs and attitudes and they can say things. And it would be very helpful if you, if everybody 
made a conscious effort to distinguish when they're talking about feminism as the concept or describing feminist critique or talking about feminist ideas or academia and when you're talking about what individuals do think and say please everyone please okay we're we done with the serious stuff for a moment yes please go on <laughs> because I've, i as as we've been talking as i will do with all of my hand games i flick between social media see what people are up to see what's going down and having briefly mentioned it how dare you worth bringing i know i listen to every word as well i'm i can i'm <laughs> one of the few men in the world that can actually multitask i am well i'm, I'm perfect anyway mm -hmm. um but well, speaking of people who wrongly assign themselves perfect donald trump uh the strangest thing in the world just happened my mind i think has melted because we now live in a world where the tic tac company you know, the makers of uh, breath fresheners I've just had to release a statement saying that they distanced themselves from the comments made by Donald Trump. Wow. <laughs> wow. Everybody is running away from Donald Trump. <sighs> when, when, you know you live in a weird world where you've got America being stalked by evil clowns and the Tic Tac company have inserted, have been inserted into the presidential race. What? What? <laughs> Amazing. If I start on that topic, I won't be able to stop, so I'm just going to... A, yeah, I'm going to hold back the down. Oh, um, can I say on implicit bias, I was just, because I've been doing um, some research because people wanted research done on systemic and institutional racism and all of that. Um, and I've no, I, I saw that there was a study recently done saying that if male, like if gamers play as black avatars, their implicit bias is reduced. So I thought that I just thought that was weird, but I funny. Think that's really good. Yeah. So it's literally walking in someone else's shoes. Yeah. And so it makes yeah. you more empathetic. That's great. I think that's fantastic, and there should be more options like that on every game, so more people have an opportunity to explore that. Yeah, I've just got to, you know, fire up the world of Warcraft again. <laughs> it's been a long time. Sorry if you heard a crash, bang, and wallop. Then I would, um, had to let the cat out. Is that Rory? Well, he does really yeah. yeah. Well, he does this. He gets all worked up because I'm in the room on my own, but I'm speaking aloud, so he thinks I'm talking to him, and he gets quite annoyed by it. <laughs> he can't work out why I'm wanting to tension. <laughs> it's like, why are you bothering me? You have you no chicken. Then no, no, I sort of nudge him away, and he's like, what the fuck, dude? Stop giving me mixed messages. 